Hello everybody, it's Keith from KMA's Corner, and welcome to KMA's Jams, just another Minecraft series. Now, how are you doing today? This is episode number 42. Yes, 42. Meaning is less. But anyways, we are going to move our villagers over here to the corresponding spots that go on this wall. Behind me you see the different labels for the different villagers and now I'm going to have to breed some villagers to get them over here that fit these corresponding spots. So I have most of them, but I can do better um, and get better versions of them. All right, I am on top of the villager breeder now and the breeding villagers are down there. There's about, hmm, let's see. There is, ooh, 110 entities there. No, 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 that can't be right. Let me back up a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's about 60 villagers. That's approximately what I was thinking in my head. And what happens is when I feed them, a baby will pop out and they'll fall into these uh, two streams on the side. And there's a hole down there where they can stay. And when they grow up, they um, grow big and go into this water stream. And then this water stream pushes them down into the chute. And as you see, there's some village... Well, as you can't see right now because I'm too far away with the render distances. There is some villagers down there. And uh, you just can't see them because I'm too far away. But uh, in order for the villagers to want to be breeding, they need a certain amount of food. So once they run out of the food that they shared... Um, they don't breed anymore so let's feed them up and get them to breed again so I'm just gonna give them a whole bunch of stacks of carrots and why am I picking those up get back down there and as you see there are already there's uh, three side bends here and you see them chucking carrots into those sides there and that's them trying to um, share their food with everybody and that sets them onto the breeding stage. So I'm just going to overfeed these guys. Um, and I'm going to have to <laughs> harvest some carrots now. To, because I've just depleted my carrot thing. But they need... Um, villagers need a certain amount of food in order to breed. And I don't remember what it is. But I know that they can hold eight stacks of food. So with 60 villagers down here, given out... I keep sucking up this food again giving out this many carrots really isn't gonna fill them up even though it seems like a lot of carrots so, they should start breeding and while they're breeding I'm gonna take a list of the villagers I have down here in my my holds down here in the villager and the R2D2 villager breeding area and I am gonna start figuring out where I want to put them over in the green dragon villager in so I'm going to have to make some sort of train track and get them over there and make a list. And I'm going to do that and show you some movement of villagers soon. All right, guys, um, as you see, this track that goes through the middle of my world and makes it look really, really ugly. Um, when you do projects like this, it's good to use something really ugly so you can get it done as fast as possible. So you can clean it up so you can get work done. And that's kind of what we're doing. So that's why whenever I make tracks for um, Minecraft things like this, I try and use Netherrack as my building block because that is so ugly. I'll get this done as soon as I possibly can and um, clean it up because I don't want this thing going through my world for too long. But the first guy that we're going to move is the farmer. He's a very important guy. He has the best wheat, potato, and carrot sale you can have all in one person. I'm not too concerned about his pumpkin or melon sales because I only use those if all three of these are um, completed because these are so much easier to get than pumpkins, I think. Um, but let's see how 1.10 does with moving of villagers. Let's try this and see what happens. Oh, look at that. 1.9, you know, I'd be throwing that thing in him all day long, and he'd be like, No, I want nothing to do with it. So, no, you don't go back in there, please. Let's push you a little harder. Make it up. Oh, we're playing 
Row, row, row your villager gently down the track. Uh oh. Nah, I don't want to hurt you. Okay, thank you. Let's just get rid of this guy. Woohoo! Auto jump for the win. Um. <laughs> so yeah, stop trying to make baby. Come on. I know your friend is over there, but come on, we can go. Oh. You stop making hearts at the other guy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So, villager moving is not the hardest thing in the world. Um, a few things that you need to know is if you want to get your villager out of the minecart, please be away from your village because he will run towards your village. Um, and, I guess 1.10 is a lot easier with uh, getting villagers moved around. All right, so you are there. I should. Hmm. I am gonna put a full block over here. I want to push you over. I want to make sure a full block goes right here still. Oh, you need to be pushed over a little bit more. There we go. Sorry, just a temporary block there. This won't be temporary, though. I'm going to keep them in via... Um, that's a temporary block, also. The offense and let's... I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use these, but I just want to make sure this guy is not going to die from a zombie apocalypse or something like that. There we go. So I just thought, now having all these guys right next to each other, they're not going to breed and make little babies here, are they? I hope not. But anyways, um, I had to figure out some way to incorporate the ceiling now above these guys. These signs are just temporary. Um, and I already put a sign for this guy. And the next person I'm going to bring over will be the paper guy. And I will stick him here. I'll just keep these guys in the mine carts and hopefully... Hmm. And hopefully they will uh, stay in place. I think I might have to stick them on top of a rail just to make sure. So why don't we try and sneak a rail under this guy. I'll do that off camera. You don't need to see that. Alright, so I have brought some of the villagers over here. As you see, the ones that I buy stuff from. Well, as I do that, we got our guy who sells redstone, lazuli, and whatever. We got our paper trade guy, and we got our best farmer that you can possibly get. And I've brought them over here, and I made this uh, setup. I think should keep them safe. I'm not 100% sure, so I might actually make a door or some sort of blockage so zombies can't come in here and just make sure that zombies can't spawn in here. Because I'm not 100% sure how safe those are. Uh, this area is for zombies but I did some tests in my test world and they seem pretty safe like this so what I gotta do is just move these signs down here and label them and bring these other guys in so while I bring the other guys in I think I'll do a quick little time lapse did you notice at the beginning of this video I was sitting straight and upright in my chair and everything looked all right then that last clip I kind of looked hunched over and you could see that um, the top of my head instead I was not in frame properly well I've been through a lot this week and as you could tell the weight of the world was on my shoulders in that last clip but everything has been fixed so um, hopefully in the next clip that you will see I'll be sitting up right again with a smile on my face because I had a little scare in my real life and that has been fixed and that is part of the reason why this video is coming out a week later than it is supposed to but now I'm just showing you how I am returning the villager to the new place and he's being a little bit of a derp I um, showed him trading a little bit but I just wanted to show you how I got my villagers over to where they were I kind of showed it earlier in the video but I thought a nice little time lapse would be nice I find out where he's supposed to live and then I make the railroad tracks to it knock down the things put down a little um, wooden trap doors, make a couple more trap doors so I can lock them in there properly and we'll get them over there. 
push. Push him. <laughs> and I hit his cart and I push him into the thing and leave him in there. Then I label him, put a sign up there, steal the sign there, throw the sign there so you can see it better. And that is all. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. So I did a little more work um, moving the villagers around. I actually, as you see, was able to get all the villagers over to the other area. So what I'm doing is I am cleaning up my mess I've left from breeding the villagers over here um, in R2-D2. So um, what I would like for you guys to tell me <clears throat> in the comments below is now I've got this area cleaned out again. This is going to be going at some point and it's going to be going over there. But what should I do in here? So what should I use R2-D2 for? in the future um, because I have <laughs> just a <laughs> excuse me for my laugh the cat bumped into one of my lights so I might have that light strobing look on my face right now but anyways as, as it flows back and forth <laughs> what would you like me to do in this area um, because yes my villager reader is eh, up there and I still have some villagers coming down. Um, but I would like to utilize the space for something other than what I have been. I took off all the, the buildings I had here holding the village. And it's a pretty big area that I can utilize for future products. So, so I changed some of the uh, build over here also from the last thing. As you see, I have the entrance desk now. You know, it's got to have the nice little flower. Welcome to the Green Dragon Villager Inn. And I moved this over here, little entrance to the kitchen area. This would be the kitchen area. I widened the building. Before the building was only too wide here, this wall actually was here. So I had to redo the whole roof and um, <clears throat> move the wall over a couple of blocks just in this section over here. So it wasn't really that big a deal. Um, I obviously have lots of more work to do in here. Lots of more work. I uh, started making a bar in this area, but I ran out of time. No, I don't want the hanging stair there. Um, so I gotta put some lights over here um, because this this little bar area is not finished. Basically, I'm gonna probably I had a table over here, so I'm probably gonna put another big table over here. Somehow section this area off. The tracks are still here because I'm going to be doing some more training and villager stuff. Just to fill this up. But to give you an idea of what this looks like. Here's the section you saw before. I added the roof to them. Um, and also put lights up there so nothing spawns up top here. And I, if you see the five stars that means I can't improve this villager at all. So these guys are here to stay. Um... And I also brought in over the brought in over the villagers that I've been working on from R2D2, and I've been filling up the holes as I've been trading with them. So I'm gonna do um, a little more trading and stuff, <laughs> stuff and things, and um, hopefully fill in these holes. And let's see, I'm not gonna work too long on it. I've done a lot already in this episode, but. Um, it would be kind of interesting to get some more villagers in here. Got my mending villager and, you know, the infinity guy, which is pretty important. The fortune three guy, the looting three guys in here somewhere. The looting three! So, um, there are some difficult enchants I'm going to be trying to get with the villagers um, that are 0.1% uh, probability, which to me means I'm going to have to basically read a thousand of the specific type. I'm trying to remember what it was that I really wanted. It was um, it was actually Sharpness 3 I think on the Diamond Sword trade here and Protection 3 on the Diamond Chest. Those I think are 0.1% of getting those in the, the armor and stuff. So I'll be doing some breeding for a long time unfortunately. Oh, unfortunately, I really actually rather like doing this type of stuff. It's it's kind of like fun, and completing a puzzle is kind of like uh, getting a perfect villager, so yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna do some work and show you the end of the episode. Hey guys, I am back. And as you see, my villager area is pretty empty. Um, let me see. Fisherman. Sorry, guy. You just ain't worth it. And I have, um, some more babies up there and they're still breeding. But I've run out of time. The video has to go up. The video needs to be edited. The video needs to be finished right now, so I could AFK if I wanted to and get these villagers. There's three now up there. But I'll just do that on my own free time, and I'll give you updates and other vi um, videos that I plan on making. So, uh, I did do some more work since the last clip, and I got some more guys, but obviously it is not finished if I'm still waiting for villages to villagers to be bred. I um, added some more work over here, over there, I decided to add brewing stands, eh, I don't know, they don't look like alcoholic drinks at all, but if I could like place these bottles, I could, I guess put um, item frames and put the bottles in there, that might look kind of cool, I might try that, we'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I love the sounds villagers make, <laughs> They're kind of funny. No, yeah, no, no. And I'm actually really surprised. Um, even though these guys are right next to each other, they're not breeding. And I think the reason why that is is because most of these guys have no inventory, and they need an inventory to want to breed. So, um, I think that is why I'm not having little babies run around here. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Um. But I do want to tell you about something first. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to talk to you. But I do stream, and I'm going to start streaming on both Twitch and Beam at the same time using Restream. I'm going to try and figure that out. But today is Friday, and tomorrow night is a big night for me because tomorrow night I am playing in a UHC. I'm not too familiar with UHCs, but um, I watch a whole bunch of them. I know the theories and the what to do behind the scenes and how to be good at UHCs, but I, I am a noob when it comes to actually playing in them. So it should be kind of fun. And the UHC that I'm playing with is with the Hypermine people. So I belong to a Patreon server for one of the Hyperminers, J.com, and um, JN and like Lapis Flory and Basket MC and Scotty all have uh, patrons that are going to be playing in this and we're going to be playing against each other and with each other and um, hopefully I will be on the team that wins yeah so I can kick some hyper mind butt yeah, yeah, yeah that's right um, so that is my goal tomorrow night which is going to be Saturday we're recording the UHC and um, oh, I got to fires and when that UHC is done, we're going to be um, uploading videos, so I'm going to be recording it. I'm also going to be streaming it, so yeah, you might want to actually follow me on Beam or Twitch, which is both Twitch at KMA's Corner or Beam Pro at KMA's Corner. So as you see, these guys are going after my villagers. Oh, now he's coming after me. Hey! I can't let that happen in UHC. So... Yes, <laughs> UHC, look forward to the videos, um, they should be starting next week or the following week, I don't know what the schedule is, I haven't been told that yet, and um, it will be exciting to play against the Hyperminers, a couple of pro players I guess, we'll see, we'll see, it should be fun, so um, yeah, keep your eyes out for that, I'm really excited for this, so have a great day. This is the end of episode number 42 of KMA's Jams, Just Another Minecraft series. And I will see you next week with episode number 43. You gotta figure out what we're doing first. Number 43. Have a great day. It's Keith. See ya.